So if you look at the warm up, it says read the following. The point six four is six points across in the X and four points up in the Y. So when we discuss horizontal and vertical, we are talking about the cross, which is horizontal and up and down for vertical. Go ahead and take a minute and graph and label the following points. So you are graphing and labeling the following points, like A, B, I, yes. is at 3, 5. B is at negative 2, 7. C is at negative 6, positive 4. 0, negative 5 is D. E is at 3, 0. F is at negative 3, negative 6. Negative 6, negative 5 for G, 2, 7 for H, 7, 0 for I, negative 5, positive 4 for um, J, 3, 6 for K, 5, 3, for L, 0, 6 for M, and negative 7, 0 for N. Questions, comments, concerns? Ooh, why is it not ringing? So as I said, today we're going to graph absolute values. Absolute values are a special type of piecewise because absolute values represent a piecewise function. Absolute value is a piecewise function. So the function f of x is known as the absolute value function. The absolute value function is going to always give the shape of a V. The highest and lowest point on the graph of an absolute value function is known as the vertex. The highest or lowest point on a graph of an absolute value function is known as the vertex. The axis of symmetry of the graph is a vertical line that divides the graph into mirror images. An absolute value graph has one axis of symmetry. That axis of symmetry will cut through the vertex. What? Are you saying it sounds weird when I say it? No. Well, now that you asked me, I can't think about it. It could be like data versus data. An absolute value function, as previously stated, can be written as a piecewise. 
An absolute value function, as I previously stated, could be written as a piecewise. If you think back to absolute value functions, when we solve for an absolute value, you have to split the absolute value into a positive and negative solution. When we solve for an absolute value, you had a positive and negative solutions. Those solutions came from where the graph of the absolute value crossed the x-axis. Those solutions came from where the graph of the absolute value crossed the x-axis. What? The domain of an absolute value function is all reals. The domain of an absolute value function is all reals. The range is the y value of the vertex. The range is the y value of the vertex. Entities of either greater than or equal to or less than or equal to depending on the direction which which your graph opens. It'll be greater than or less than the y value of the vertex depending on the direction with which the graph opens. The graph currently graphed on the front board is known as the absolute value parent function. The graph. The graph's vertex is at zero, zero. It is the purple dot at the origin. Dashed green line represents the equation of the ALS. So the axis of symmetry is going to be the graph that cuts the graph in half. It will always be x equals. It will always be x equals. The slope of this graph is 1, 1 going up one over one. The transformations of an absolute value graph are going to be affected in many ways. The first way they can be affected is by a negative. The negative will reflect the graph across the x-axis. A negative will reflect the graph across the x-axis. The A value will stretch your graph vertically or compress your graph vertically. The H value will move your graph left or right. It will move your graph left or right. And the k value will move your graph up or down. This is known as vertex form. Because the vertex is h comma k. Today, we're just going to focus on a negative A and a positive A and an A value, meaning your slope. When the graph is open up, the A value is positive. 
When the graph is open up, the A value is positive. When the graph opens down, your A value is negative. The A will represent the slope of the absolute value. The A represents the slope of the absolute value. So if A represents our slope, if A is greater than one, my graph is stretched. If A is a fraction, the graph will be compressed. So if A is greater than one, it is stretched. If A is less than one or greater than zero, meaning a fraction, the graph will be compressed. So let's look at an example. You want to, for tonight, identify the vertex, all of our vertexes for today until tomorrow are zero, zero. Every graph you're gonna look at today, the vertex is zero, zero. The negative reflects my graph. And the one half compresses it. So you're going to start your graph at zero, zero, and then apply your slope to the right of the vertex. So that means it goes down one and right one, or right two, down one, right two, down one, right two, down one, right two. Since it has to be cut in half through my vertex so that AOS is at x equals zero, there has to be a point even. So down one and left two, down one and left two. So it's like your line, instead of continuing left of the vertex, will go down and opposite. So you could fold that graph in half and every point would line up. A four will stretch the graph. Its vertex is at zero, zero. I know guys, give me one more second. It goes up four and over one then, which means it goes up four and left one, up four left one as well. So for tonight, your